The Guinness Book of World Records is full of weird and boring records, but you won't see those today. Chainsaw juggling, incredible car jumps, walking on a flying plane, skydiving without a parachute, hundreds of thousands of bees on a man, and more. There will only be the ultimate extreme adrenaline, courage, and recklessness. This is infinity. And in this episode, you'll see the craziest Guinness World Records ever. A saw is a dangerous tool, let alone a chainsaw. Even a switched-off chainsaw can cut you pretty badly, let alone a working tool that easily cuts down large trees. I'd stay away from chainsaws, but some people aren't afraid of them at all. For example, Ian Stewart. This daredevil juggles chainsaws while they work. He set some extremely crazy and dangerous records that are creepy to watch. One wrong move and he could say goodbye to his finger or half an arm. All the more amazing is that Ian is able to flip chainsaws 105 times in a row. And here's another similar record, but as a duo. To your left, by the way, is Space Cowboy, a real madman who likes to swallow swords. Guys throw chainsaws at each other and also turn them in their hands. In a minute, they threw chainsaws to each other 40 times, setting one of the most unrealistic records in history. I think many of you have played GTA. Well, at least know what it is. I'm sure one of your favorite activities in the game was jumping cars on mountains and trampolines. By the way, they even gave bonuses for this. I wonder who gave them to the player, an invisible judge? But that's not the point. There are similar in real life, and it looks even more epic. For example, the American, Greg Godfrey, set a fantastic record for jumping a truck. A few years ago, he flew the distance of 166 feet on a 9-ton truck. Here he accelerates, picks up speed over 62 miles per hour, flies up the ramp, and lands safely on the other side. Imagine if truckers delivered goods like that. Rob Drydick likes to jump a car. As you can see, he has a regular Chevrolet, not a giant tractor. But the trick is that he jumps in reverse. Have you ever seen anything like that? He managed to fly over 88 and a half feet. That deserves likes from you. Get set. The world is full of unrealistic thrill seekers, and wing walkers are some of the most adventurous ones. In case you didn't know, these are guys who get onto the hull or wings of an airplane and hold on while the aircraft flies. Sometimes they even walk around the plane while it's flying. That in and of itself is very cool, but Thomas Lackey's even cooler. It's hard to believe that this old man is one of the bravest on the planet. In 2013, he became the world's oldest wing walker. He flew outside an airplane at age of 93 years and 100 days. Thomas managed to stay on the wings of a biplane during a flight from Scotland to Northern Ireland. Even at a young age, that's a hefty achievement, but at 93, it's quite a feat. Such a record would be extremely difficult to break. It's hard to find anyone whose nerves are stronger than those of the old man, but his achievement is not the limit of madness. What about tightrope walkers? This extreme activity looks mesmerizing. You watch the brave men and women walk on a thin rope at great heights with suspense. Crossing even over an abyss seems like something impossible. But what about walking at an altitude of over four miles? Do you think I mean mountains? Take it up a notch, literally. Mike Howard showed what true insanity is all about. He takes off high into the sky in a balloon, which is connected by a beam to another balloon, emerges from the basket and takes an extremely dangerous walk. In 1998, he walked a metal beam from one balloon basket to another at an altitude of 18,800 feet. And in 2004, he surpassed himself, making a walk across the sky at an altitude of 21,400 feet. You'd think that'd be the ultimate extreme, but Mike didn't think so, which is why he's also blindfolded on the beam. In general, insanity is not always about walking at gigantic heights or jumping cars. You can be crazy in other ways, too. For example, in the immense love for insects. I'm sure that almost all of you can't stand cockroaches and are afraid to even approach these disgusting creatures. When we see a cockroach, we immediately look for something to swat the pest with. Ken Edwards, on the other hand, does the simple thing and just eats the cockroach. For him, it's nothing, because he holds one of the most disgusting and insane records on the planet. In the year 2000, he ate 24 large cockroaches in one minute in front of a stunned audience, and he didn't even twitch a muscle on his face. 
It felt like it was his standard afternoon snack. What insect could be nastier than a cockroach? How about a bee? No argument. These insects are very good for nature. They pollinate flowers and produce delicious honey. But at the same time, they sting painfully. Even if a single bee flies nearby, we feel uncomfortable. But what about hundreds of thousands of these buzzing creatures? For a Chinese man named Ron Lan Ming, it's nothing. He can literally wrap himself in a thick suit of bees. This is what he looks like in this footage. Right now, he's wearing over 139 pounds of bees, more than anyone in history. Buckets and basins of bees are being dumped on the desperate Chinese, but he doesn't care. Ron stands calmly and tries to set a very dangerous and crazy record. Of course, he succeeded. 637,000 insects sat on and near him that day, and Ruan himself can now be rightfully called the Bee Man. Speaking of bees, many people jump into water in an attempt to escape the buzzing creatures, a lake or a river, for example. This is not the best option. The bees will wait for you to get out of the water. Well, as for jumping into the water, there are some crazy records here, too. For example, in 1983, the American athlete Dana Kuntz made a dive from a height of 172 feet. The champion performed a triple rotation, entered the water perfectly, and came out of it on his own. But there's someone cooler. The Swiss, Lazaro Schaller, nicknamed Lazo, in 2016, he set an insane record by climbing a rock and diving into a natural pool from a height of 193 feet. That's even higher than the Tower of Pisa. Unlike Dana, Lasso did not do spins and jumped smoothly. Despite the fact that he entered the water very well, he was injured. The Swiss diver dislocated his hip. But that was no surprise, as he hit the water like a bullet at speeds of 76 miles per hour. Luckily, it was only a hip injury. The thrill seeker soon made it to the shore and was congratulated. Continuing the topic of jumps, the only thing missing in this episode is the epic skydiving. But a parachute is kind of boring. What about jumping without a parachute? Seems impossible, doesn't it? But Luke Akins disagrees with you. In 2016, this American stuntman jumped out of a plane at an altitude of 4.7 miles, went into free fall, and landed two and a half minutes later. Luke didn't shatter into a million pieces, but it wasn't because he had a steel body or anything like that. He just landed on a net stretched over the ground. It was 98 by 98 feet. It might sound safe, but anything can go wrong in a 4.7-mile flight. Luke might be blown away by the wind, he might lose consciousness, or he might miscalculate his landing. It's a good thing he's a real pro who did everything to a high standard. Get set. Let's get back to animals for a while. There will be no more cockroaches and bees, but there will be snakes. You probably thought of records like most snakes on your arm or the person who survived the most snake bites. Maybe there are such records, too. But I'll show you Jackie Bibby, the man-man who puts snakes in his mouth. Lots of them. Venomous ones. I wonder how he came up with that. Jackie literally takes rattlesnakes, rolls them up into a tube, and shoves them into his mouth, then holds them there while the snakes are wondering why they're being treated like this. Bibby managed to set a Guinness World Record by swallowing 13 rattlesnakes and holding them for 10 seconds. But that's not all. He also takes baths with snakes. He once shared a bath with 123 rattlesnakes. Not a bad replacement for a bubble bath. And when he's not setting records, he's doing shows, scaring Snoop Dogg with his insanity and just shocking everyone. After such tension, I suggest you take a little break and take a look at a calmer record, a sandcastle. You built these castles on the beach as a child, no doubt. How big were your sandcastles? Write about that in the comments. Whatever you write, know this. All of your builds have been surpassed by these guys. Last year in Denmark, they built the largest sandcastle in history at 69 feet high. The base alone is over 98 feet long, and the entire castle took over 6,400 tons of sand. The builders also used clay and glue to make the structure more stable. Not every beach could hold such a huge castle. And now let's get back to the madness in extreme. The next record was set by Thomas Von Tonder from South Africa, a master rope climber. In November 2020, he decided to conquer the great height of 164 feet in Johannesburg. Thomas climbed the 164-foot rope to a cradle suspended between two huge pipes. He did it in just 3 minutes and 19 seconds. The climbing footage is breathtaking. 
Though Thomas was attached to a safety harness, it doesn't make his record any less crazy. Not everyone could have done it. Get set. The human neck is not the strongest part of the body. It's easy to stretch it and quite easy to break it. It's not recommended to strain it at all. But the people from this episode don't listen to the recommendations, because otherwise they wouldn't be here. John Evans, on the contrary, loads his neck in a monstrous way, and it's allowed him to set an insane Guinness record. In 1999, he held a mini car weighing about 353 pounds on his head for 33 seconds. That sounds to me like something close to the limit of human capacity. It's creepy to imagine how hellish a load is on the head, neck, and spine. But John's not limited to cars. For example, he can balance with kegs of beer on his head or with a bunch of tires. He doesn't care what he wears on his head at all, as long as it's something heavy. By the way, as John himself said, he discovered an unusual ability when he was working with bricks. He realized that he could work and move faster if he carried bricks on his head instead of in his hands. So began his journey as a crazy record breaker. If John Evans worked with concrete blocks, he would probably carry them on his head too. But the next person from this episode, Norwegian Narve Leret, doesn't carry the blocks. He smashes them in the best tradition of martial artists. In November 2016, in Oslo, during the filming of a TV show, he broke 90 concrete blocks with his hand in one minute, setting an incredible Guinness World Record. But in general, it doesn't matter to him what to break the blocks with – hands, feet, elbows, shin – he destroys concrete with his whole body. It seems that everything was already in this episode, except the thrill seekers haven't set themselves on fire yet. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Anthony Britton is the human torch from Marvel, but only in reality. He can easily set himself on fire, then go for a run and set some records along the way. A few years ago, he did just that. In one minute, the burning Britton ran 669 feet and got into the Guinness Book of World Records. He ran the distance in 24.5 seconds. Not Usain Bolt, of course, but no one set the Jamaican athlete on fire before the start. That's all, guys. You have any personal records? Share them in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you later.